In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Ash and how to really maximize her potential. If you've been here before, then you probably know that Ash is my second most played legend behind Bangalore. And if you're new here, I'd love for you to stick around, so don't forget to hit that sub button as it'll really help out the channel. Whether you're new to the game or an experienced Ash main, I'm confident there will be some stuff you haven't seen before, and hopefully this guide helps you. All that being said, let's get right into it. Alright, so if you've played Ash at any point for any length of time, then your opinion of her is either that she's extremely underrated or that she's underwhelming. Out of all the legends on the roster, she might be the most polarizing, and in my opinion that's largely due to how difficult she is to play well. I think that difficulty stems from how abstract her kit is, and how it's kind of on the player to create their own unique playstyle because while she's definitely not the most versatile legend, she also doesn't fit into any clearly defined roles on the squad. These are my opinions of course, but I also think this is why she hasn't really broken into the legend meta at any point and hasn't been used a lot in competitive Apex. But you know, they said Bangalore was perpetually B tier. The most balanced legend. Not worth playing when you could play Gibraltar instead. Look around you. What do you see? Bangalores. Bangalores everywhere. I am once again telling you not to sleep. Don't sleep on Ash. You heard it here first. Ash favors an aggressive playstyle and is best suited to be utilized in a leading and scouting role or in a fragging and flanking role. This means she will be in the front line starting off most engagements like Wraith. However, there are some key differences in how Ash needs to approach fights. Wraith is at her best when she plays as aggressively as possible, looking for damage and openings for her team to move up on. If she ever gets in trouble, she has her tactical ability to phase back to safety. Ash, on the other hand, should be starting fights from a bit further back. The lack of a low cooldown phase means that getting caught out of position away from your team comes at either the cost of a 2 minute ability or your life. While ulting out to safety is certainly a good option in many cases, it's a play that puts you on the back foot for a while, greatly reducing what you can do for the rest of the fight. In this way, she can be very unforgiving in my opinion. She's not a great 1v1 legend, so success in CQC fights is entirely dependent on skill. Her kit is also not great for a reactive playstyle, and what I mean by that is there are certain legends that are more forgiving and cater to players that play almost entirely off of Reflex. Bangalore, Horizon, Wraith, Octane, etc. Her kit is precision based, and everything you do has to be methodical. Additionally, she is a skill based legend, and what I mean by that is, her kit provides the tools necessary for higher skilled players to essentially bully lower skilled ones. What Ash can do that Wraith can't, is use her ultimate as an instant pushing and angling tool. If Ash and her team want to wipe a squad standing in their way, Ash can portal to a new forward angle which will put her enemies in an unfavorable position. If Wraith wants to do something similar with her portal, she needs to run in and likely use her phase, giving her opponents time to prepare for the play and punish it. Ash's phase breach does this play instantly, making it a much more oppressive and surefire option. By getting to a new position quickly, Ash can pin opponents in place with angles and her Q, buying time for her teammates to close the gap and help her end the fight quickly. If anything, Ash should be played much more like Octane than Wraith. Both characters have a low cooldown ultimate that is very useful for making aggressive plays at a moment's notice. As for best team compositions to run with Ash, because she favors an aggressive playstyle, she performs the best in aggressive team comps, and pairs especially well with Recon class legends, namely Bloodhound, Seer, and Crypto. That way you can keep track of all opposing players at all times with massive amounts of intel. I found a lot of success when running duos with my boy, Don't Be So Mayo, where he was running Crypto and I was running Ash, and I would stand next to him while he EMP'd, and then I would initiate the push with my phase tear. She also pairs quite well with Horizon, Catalyst, Valkyrie, Bangalore, Gibraltar, Revenant, and even Octane. Earlier I mentioned that I don't feel she is the most versatile legend when it came to discussing her ideal playstyle, but when it comes to team compositions, she's actually very versatile. The only legend I found some difficulty pairing her with is Pathfinder. Let me know in the comments if I'm missing something, or simply wrong on this one, but oftentimes it feels a little redundant or difficult to effectively coordinate. But in general, it's pretty liberating and allows for a lot of creativity and playstyle and approach when considering how you and your squad want to play as a team and who you want to run if you're planning on playing Ash. Because she wants to be ulting towards teams, one mid-range and one close-range weapon is ideal. At the end of the day, she performs fine with most weapons and it comes down to what you're most comfortable with. You can't go wrong running a Flatty, R3, or Nemesis paired with an SMG or shotgun. I've personally found a lot of success running the Havoc because of its versatility as well as the Wingman, and I've also been very effective running the Sentinel paired with an R9 or a PK, but in general I'd probably avoid Marksman or Sniper weapons when playing her. In regards to what her best maps are, I think she plays decently well on all of them, which speaks to her versatility in this respect, but in my opinion her best maps are World's Edge, Stormpoint, and Olympus. In my opinion, Ash is a great legend to learn the fundamentals of the game on. She is an Assault Legend with a Pseudo Recon ability, a Pseudo Zoning ability, and a Movement ability. To keep things organized, I'll break down her abilities one by one, and we'll start with her passive, Mark for Death. Earlier I said that if you've played Ash, then you have one of two opinions, underrated or underwhelming. I'm going to add to that because when considering her best ability, you're also in one of two camps. 
Her ult is her best ability and the only real utility she has, or her passive ability is her best ability. Marked for Death allows Ash to interact with the death box of any player killed by another squad to find that squad's current location. If the attackers are dead, it will return no surviving attackers. The locations of the attackers are marked on the map with the enemy here ping for about 8 seconds. For about 4 seconds, Ash is told the number of marked enemies. Those enemies are notified position revealed by Ash on their HUD or heads up display. In addition, Ash's map screen displays a marker over every death box that is less than 200 seconds old. She can use these markers to ping them from any distance. That is a lot of unique intel, and it's quite slept on actually. I've played with plenty of random Ashes, and not once do they siphon information from their passive to the rest of the team. I will say though that if I'm solo queuing ranked on Ash, I won't always ping death boxes because as soon as I ping a death box, my randoms will usually immediately rush in that direction. So I'm selective about it based on in-game situations, but I'm actively keeping tabs of what's going on. That being said, if you play Ash simply for her ult, then you're doing yourself and your squad a disservice in my opinion. Her passive is incredibly powerful for locating enemies, planning third parties, or even trying to avoid fights. By knowing where recent death boxes are, Ash can lead her team in whatever way fits their current objective. For me, I started playing Ash when I hit a wall as a player and didn't feel like I was improving anymore. One of my weaknesses was that I didn't think the game enough and I felt that Ash's kit was a direct means to actively work on my weaknesses. Having macro intel such as what her passive ability provides helps you learn how to or simply work on your rotations throughout the match and even provides you the means necessary to become an IGL or IGL even more effectively. And if you're not the IGL, it's very important to constantly be siphoning information to your squad's IGL. Ping relevant death boxes at nearby POIs and choke points, and also challenge yourself to evaluate what the ideal rotation is based off of where fights are taking place across the map. Now as great as I think this ability is for ranked, I think it offers even more utility in pubs. Ash, in my opinion, is an amazing legend for pub stomping. We've all been there. Where should we go? With Ash's passive, you should always know where to go, allowing you to maintain a good pace throughout the game. Overall, the utility of her passive ability especially is understated, and with all the nerfs to recon class legends, I can envision a scenario in which her utility as a pseudo recon legend is of even greater importance in the future. Moving on to Ash's tactical ability, Arc Snare. Once again, if you've played Ash at any point for any length of time, your opinion is, well, probably just that it's the most underwhelming part of her kit. It allows her to throw a spinning snare that damages and tethers the first enemy that gets too close with a 20 second cooldown. Upon landing, the projectile creates a spherical snare trap with a radius of 4 meters. If an enemy enters its radius, they take 10 damage, with shielded opponents taking double damage and are snared for 4 seconds. She did get a buff recently centered around this ability, where Respawn attempted to make it more reliable and deadly by increasing the snare's travel speed, decreasing its cooldown, and decreasing activation delay and growth time. And with the release of Season 17, they made an adjustment where she's now slowed to weapon sprint speed instead of weapon walk speed when targeting with her Q. While I agree that this is the weakest part of her kit, I also think it's actually quite versatile with how it can be utilized. How I like to think of it is that her tether is similar to a fused knuckle cluster. You should be farming and pestering teams and generally just trying to make life difficult for them. You should deploy her tether to let the enemy know you're there. Make them feel you and feel your presence. Ash's Q can also be thought of as a die at Watson fence. It's a good zoning tool and it's useful for pinning your opponent. What I mean by this is, say you're in a situation where you have enemies on either side of you and your squad. If you're looking one way and your teammate calls for you to help them shoot the other way, what I'll do is I'll use her tether to pin the opponent I was shooting at in order to keep tabs on them and be able to look off and shoot the other way. They won't be able to move from where I snared them, and in my mind I'll have a mental clock going and look back after 3-4 to four seconds. Honestly, the way her kit is designed is for you to be the aggressor. Tether your opponent, then Ash ult to close the gap towards them and eliminate them quickly. But from my experience, this doesn't often play out as intended. Ash's arc snare definitely does get a bad rep, but it's a lot better than people think. My advice to you is to use it often and be predictive with where you target it. Make opposing players have to think about you and make life difficult for them. Next I'll break down Ash's ultimate ability, Phase Breach. Some basics. It tears open a one-way portal to a targeted location and has a cooldown of 2 minutes. Ash immediately enters the phase tear upon activation. It lasts for about 15 seconds and the maximum range is 62.5 meters. Her ultimate is where her skill gap lies because it can be extremely punishing if used incorrectly. While her passive ability is great for macro positioning, her ultimate ability is a great micro positioning tool. But with that being said, ult placement is super important. If you're pushing someone with your ult, you probably shouldn't portal right in their face, even if you've damaged them. You always want to be scanning and looking for good spots to cover ground to and ideally portal to somewhere that has cover. With her ultimate ability, Ash is very effective at flanking and taking off angles, and even if you're using it as a team rotation tool, the same rule should apply. Don't ult to super obvious locations, and try to ult to spots that have some level of safety, where you can still catch your opponent off guard. Now a common error I see with Ash players is that they will use their ultimate when just rotating a zone, or if they fall behind to catch up to their team. Say an enemy squad pulls up after you had just used your ult, now you're without that utility to help yourself and your squad. 
It's really important to refrain from blowing your ult if avoidable and save it for more important moments in a match, either as a team rotation tool or as an escape tool. Even if I think her passive ability is her best ability, her ultimate ability is what helps your squad the most. That being said, I would advise to always carry ult excels and be popping ult excels as you find them to make sure that you always have your ult charged and ready to go. It does have a faster cooldown, but you want to stay ready. I would also say that one of the most challenging aspects to playing her is finding the balance with how you deploy her ult. It should be used at your own discretion and you have to develop a feel for making reads and seeing openings. If you see an opening, go for it. If you're in danger, use it to stay alive. Earlier I mentioned that in my opinion Ash isn't well suited to be played reactively or entirely off reflex. That applies here because her ult is much more effective when using it to make a team push where you can target it accordingly. If you're in the middle of a fight and you want to try to escape, it often feels like a shot in the dark where you're just hoping for the best. But if you are in a scenario where you need to use it as an escape tool, a pro tip I have is to either tether where you exit the tear to slow whoever is chasing you, or take a step backwards when you exit the ultimate, because the enemy will have their back to you and you can then proceed to beam them. Another thing to keep in mind is to keep a steady hand or thumb when aiming her ultimate and even her Q, especially if you're a roller player on a linear response curve. And lastly, Ash ult is much more effective at taking height than covering distance on flat ground. Food for thought. Overall, the impact of her phase breach shouldn't be understated when used correctly. It's a powerful tool that can really help your team, as well as instill fear in your opponents. On the surface, Ash is a very simple character but possesses a lot of potential in terms of overall impact. She provides a very unique value that makes her a character with a high skill ceiling, and while she may take a sec to get down, the payoff is definitely worth it. Plus, she has some of the best cosmetics in the game, which doesn't hurt. Ash is currently very undervalued and many gamers aren't drawn to maining her because of her high skill ceiling and how unforgiving she can feel at times. But if you want to be a player that provides a unique impact, Ash may be the legend for you. Let me know in the comments if these tips make a difference, and I'll see you in the next one.